Hey, you 12. Welcome back to the first and only math channel on YouTube. We're going to start with your revision question for today. Again, this is from the recently published sample exam from Nesta. Multiple choice question for which of the following is the derivative of 5 to the power of 2x plus 3. Pause the video, have a think. I'm going to go through the answer very, very shortly. All right, so answer number A is keeping the exponential term as is and then multiplying by 2 because 2 is the derivative of the function in the exponent. This would be the correct answer if our base was e, but our base is not e, our base is 5. Okay, and we looked at in class the reason behind this, but the shortcut is when you're differentiating with a different base, first of all, you do what you would do normally and then you just multiply by ln of the base. So we just need to do this answer, multiply by ln 5, which is why D is the correct answer. Well done if you spotted it. Today we'll be diving into statistical calculations. So the focus of today is uh, basically how to compute statistics with your trusty Casio calculator. All right, so first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today is variance and standard deviation, which are two concepts we did look at in the discrete probability function topic but today we'll be calculating those based off scores rather than functions. Okay, so we have variance and standard deviation measure the spread of a data set. So a higher standard deviation means that your data set is more spread out as opposed to a smaller standard deviation, which will be more consistent, less spread out. Okay. Uh, there are two types of uh, standard deviation. There is population standard deviation, which is denoted by this Greek letter here, which is lowercase sigma. Uh, there's also lowercase s for sample standard deviation. Okay, these are slightly different measures. They are calculated in slightly different ways uh, for reasons that are overly confusing in my opinion. But all that you need to know is that for the majority of the questions in this course, uh, unless specifically stated otherwise, we're going to be finding population standard deviation. Okay, so if a question just says calculate the standard deviation, assume they are wanting the population one, only find the sample one if the question specifically says find sample, okay? Uh, you may remember from year 11 that the variance is defined as the square of the standard deviation. It's the same for this, okay? So if you want to find variance, all you need to do is find standard deviation and just square it. Now, there is a way of calculating uh, standard deviation by hand. It looks like this. It's pretty overwhelming and very time consuming. You need to find the, uh, the distance between each score and the mean. You need to square those distances. You need to add them all up. That's uppercase sigma for sum. So you're summing together all the squared distances from each score to the mean, dividing by the number of scores and taking the square root. Okay, very confusing, very time consuming. You're probably asking yourself, is there a better way? It's just such a hassle. I have such a difficult time doing it. There's got to be some other way for me to do this. And the answer is yes, there is a better way. We can find these measures just using our calculator on stats mode, which is what we'll be looking at today. Okay. So for our first example, we have the number of hours spent practicing the Glockenspiel by my students recorded in this table. So this is hours practice, number of students essentially. So three students practice one hour, two students practice seven hours, you get it, okay? We're gonna look at how we can enter this table into our trusty Casio calculator and find these three measures, okay? So I'll just pause here while I get my emulator ready. Okay, here we go, here is my emulator. It is for a bit of an older model. This is the Casio FX82ES. I'm guessing most of you guys watching this video are running with the Casio FX82AU Plus or Plus 2, which is good because the more recent models can do more stats. So if you've got a calculator, please get it ready and play along. First thing we're gonna do is enter the data. So if I go into mode and I press two for stats mode, uh, we've got a lot of options. All we want for today is option one, which is one variable, single variable data. We're only measuring one thing, which is hours practice. So we go one. Now, if you don't have this frequency column here, uh, it's a really handy thing to have because then you don't have to put in uh, one three times. You can just do one with a frequency of three. 
So the way I got that on my calculator is I went into setup, which is in yellow here. So shift setup. Uh, none of these are useful right now. I'm gonna go down to the next page. Option three is for stats. And stats says frequency on or off. If you press one, you will now have that frequency column when you go into stats mode. So again, we go mode, two for stats, single variable data, and you should have your frequency column. All right, now we enter our data. So I'm just gonna enter the scores first from one to seven. So one, press equals to enter, and then it goes down. So two, three, four, All right, now I'm gonna use the arrows to go across and up to the top. And now we can enter our frequencies. So we go three, zero, two. Okay, now our data is entered in. If you press AC, that'll clear the screen, but the data is still stored in your calculator until you turn it off and on again. Okay, so it is in there, and now we need to find our statistics. So the first one is the mean. Okay, we can actually do these A and C right now. So the way way you get your statistics is above one in yellow, it says stat, that's where all your statistics are. So if you press shift one, you'll get a bunch of options. Yours should look the same as mine, except that I have this extra option of edit, which I don't need. So you should have type, data, sum, variance, and min max, okay? Um, if you go into type, it'll just ask you what type of data you want, if you want to enter some more. So we don't want to do that right now. If we go option two for data, it'll take us back to our table if you want to make some changes, if you've made a mistake. Uh, option three, we don't worry about because you're going to have it. Option four is uh, sum. Actually, for me, it's sum. For you guys, option four is, uh, option three is sum. So if we go four, you can find the sum of all your scores if you want, or you can find the sum of all your scores squared, just because. If we go to the next one, which is VAR, this is where the gold mine is, okay? Here you've got N for number of scores, you've got X bar for your mean, and now mine look like this, yours look like sigma X and SX, okay? Sigma X is your population standard deviation, SX is your sample, okay? So we're gonna be going option three, unless the question specifically wants option four, okay? So for the mean, we can press two to get the X bar. So two equals 4.36 repeater. So hopefully yours says the same. We can, that's the answer for question A, 4.3636, whatever you want, rounded. Now we can go back into that, into VAR, and we can do option three, which is our population standard deviation for question C. So three equals 1.69. There you go, funny number. All right, so if that was compared to a data set that had a standard deviation of 2.69, this one would be less spread out, okay? So higher standard deviation, more spread. And now for part B, I can't do this on my calculator, but you guys can. If we go clear that, if we go back to our options for stats, uh, option six for me is min max, for you guys it's five. Now mine's an older calculator, all I can get is the smallest and the largest score. But you guys have more options. You should have Q1, med, and Q3 here, okay? That's the first quartile, the median, and Q3. So now if you guys have that, you can press in four for median, and it should tell you the median is five, okay? If you're not getting that, maybe double check your data because uh, you could have entered it in wrong. So there you go. These are three things that can be done with the calculator. And when you get really familiar with it, it can be a time saver. And it's a really good way to check an answer if you're not sure in an exam. All right, for the next one, we have another group of students graded on their final exam for the bassoon. A couple of bassoons here. We want to find the interquartile range and the variance. Okay, so again, we are gonna use our calculator. Here it is. So just like last time, first thing we need to do is enter our data in. Um, so first thing we need to do is clear it by turning the calculator off and on. Okay, does that work? Cool. So now we go mode. 
we go stats, single variable data again, and now we have an empty table because we cleared it. All right, so we obviously can't enter in 10 to 19 as a score because that's a range of scores. As we looked at before, the way we handle this is we take the class center. So if we do 10 plus 19 is 29, half of that is 14 and a half. There is your center, 14.5, okay? So it's the, the midpoint or the average of the two endpoints essentially. Next one, 20 to 29, the midpoint of that is uh, 24.5. And now you can see the pattern here, we're gonna have 34.5, 44.5 is time consuming. Oh, no, sorry, 54.5, 64.5, and 74.5. Okay, we'll go across, we'll do our frequencies. So we've got one, four. Don't know why I'm reading it out loud, you guys can read. 15, 11, and seven. All right, that's the most annoying part. Now that that's done, we can AC, clears the screen, but the data is still locked away inside the little computer. All right. So now we can find the interquartile range. Well, I actually can't because my calculator is old, but you guys can go into stats. You can go into min max and you should be able to get quartile three and quartile one and find the distance between them. I'll give you guys a bit of time to do that. All right, you should have that data entered in now. So now if you on your calculator, cause mine is a fossil that can't do this, but if you go shift one and you go into min max and you pick quartile three, it should say 64.5. And then if you go quartile one, back again, uh, option three, quartile one, it says 44.5. So the distance between those two is 20. So there is your interquartile range, okay? From 44.5 to 64.5, okay? Now the next one I can actually do, we're finding the variance. And as we said in the notes, the way we find the variance is we find the uh, the standard deviation and we just square it. So I'll go into my stats. I'll go VAR is where they are. Okay, again, remember this one's sample, this one's population. So if I press population, it says 14.9, pretty close to 14.9. So now if I do that answer squared, I get my variance, which is 222.027. Okay, so that's all there really is to it. So it is worth getting familiar with your calculator and how to do stats because it's often the quickest solution, especially for standard deviation and variance. And yeah, that's really all there is to it today. So you guys can have a go at the questions in 906. Once again, just a variety should be plenty. Just get comfortable with using your calculator in stats mode is really the goal for today because it's a good tool in your toolbox, basically. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.